What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018, and as always, we got a ton of news to go over, so let's just jump right into it. The first news story for today, again, is from yesterday, is that Zero Aura is now available in limited numbers due to the preview screening of the movie that happened yesterday, well, the day before, the day after, the two days ago. Full release towards the end of next week, and basically, Zero Aura is now available to be used at the battle spot, only the free battle spot, and not during VGC. Obviously, no online competitions or none of that. So basically, the people who did get to see the movie early during this preview screening of the movie got codes for Zero Aura and was able to get them as gifts in their games. I've seen a couple of people on Twitter flexing that they got these codes, and then I've seen a couple of people excited that the ban was lift of for Zero Aura on the battle spot because because they could now bring their hacked Zero Auras over and, you know, basically use them against random people. I don't know how I feel about this. Let me know what how you fall on this in the comment section below. I'm happy Zero Aura got into the hands of some people, but we're gonna see this with people hacking and manipulating their way to get one and then to use it in the free battle spot. I don't think it's pretty. Well, it's a free battle spot one, so it doesn't really matter per se, but I really don't like the idea of someone kind of cheating for a Pacific Pokemon and then taking that and using that online. I think that kind of sucks, especially when it comes to the idea that you're playing with someone that doesn't know what they're getting into. You know what I'm saying? They may see the Zero Aura on your team, but when you're selecting your team and stuff like that, but again, they don't ask for you to bring the, that Pokemon particularly in. And it just like, it, it sucks for me because I wouldn't want to battle somebody with Zero Aura right now, even if it's just a regular Pokemon, even though it's a, it's a mythical Pokemon, but it, 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 and it has old these stats, but you could probably take it down with a good setup. But I wouldn't want to battle one. I wouldn't want to battle one unless I had one or unless it was like available everywhere for everyone could have one on their team so let me know how you feel about that in the comment section below and your thoughts on zero aura being available to be used in the battle spot now continuing on with pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon news let's just get this out of the way the special battle season 11 has been revealed and this is coming from cerebi.net it says season 11 will run from july 10th to september 3rd 2018 it runs on pokemon sun and moon the original base games and as well as pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon with rankings separating each game this rule set is kind of standards but allows the use of mythical pokemon which is dope that's kind of cool which will kind of hint that zero aura potentially down the line will be able to use as well as marshadow i think this is pretty cool also that's included to use in this bunch that are not mythical Pokemon technically are the standard version of Necrozma and the standard version of Zygarde. I believe the standard version of Zygarde. I think, you know, Zygarde is always standard, but 100% Zygarde is, is that a different version? It's the same thing. The battle type for this season is going to be single battle, so it's not going to be a double battle setup. The restrictions are the national decks, legendary Pokemon, so that means no Mewtwo, no Lugia, no Ho Ho, no Kyogre, Gridon, Rayquaza. It goes on and on. No legendaries are able to be used this season outside of Necrozma and Zygarde in mythical Pokemon. If you want to categorize them as legendary, some people do, some people don't. And just to get this out of the way, it also includes that Dust Main Necrozma and Dust Wings Necrozma cannot be used. And the regular standard rules apply, including all Pokemon will be set to level 100. You choose three of the six Pokemon to go into battle. You 
can't have Pokemon holding two of the same items and battles are gonna have a 10 minute duration with turns having 60 second timers on. It sounds like a pretty cool setup for season 11. I'm interested in seeing some of these battles, especially at the world and the streams and stuff like that. I will be covering more online competition battle stuff here on Pokemon News Daily. So if you are interested, like always in this stuff, please hit that subscribe, ring the bell so you can be updated on news as they drop. Now, as a side note on the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon games and this Pokemon Sun and Moon games, we got streaming information on the Pokemon North America International Championship. Now, this is coming directly from Pokemon.com. It says, tune in to watch exciting matches live from the largest Pokemon tournament in North America being held Friday, July 6th. Pokemon trading card game and Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon video game championship VGC. Matches will be featured all three days of the competition and Pokemon Tournament DX will join the fray on Saturday and Sunday. Expert commentators will help you enjoy each match, whether you're a Grizzly veteran or, or still a champ in the making. Now they're going to be streaming primarily on Twitch. I'm going to have all the links in the description so you guys can check it out from their links to Pokemon Tournament, to VGC, to Training Card Game, whatever floats your boat, I'm going to have those links again in the description below. They also have revealed all the commentators for TGC, for VGC, for the Pokemon DX tournaments and stuff like that. And they also have the full streaming schedule. Again, if you need the information, I'm going to have a link in the description so you guys can jump in and check it out. Now, moving on to Pokemon Go news, I feel like we can't go a day without some brand new Pokemon Go news coming out from Niantic. Now, again, this is also coming from Cerebeat.net. I also have seen this other places as well as Pokemon Go Hub and stuff like that, but let's just read this from Cerebeat. It says, Niantic has announced that Pokemon Go Special Weekend in Japan on the weekend of July 26th throughout July 29th. There will be special events held at partner locations across Japan, of course. These locations require purchasing a ticket at the stores, which would they will allow you to check in and participating at the sponsored Pokestop for that day. Now, when at the event from 10 o'clock to 20 o'clock Japanese Standard Time on these particular days, there will be an increased spawns of various Pokemon and double experience for all participants participants with the spawns happening anywhere in Japan. Now the Pokemon that are going to spawn, I'm going to have the whole list of them and where exactly they're going to be spawned. So you got unknowns, SB, Charmander, different unknowns like T, J, Squirtle, Pikachu, Bulbasaur, basically your Gen 1 starters and different unknown letters spawning throughout all of Japan. I think this is pretty cool, a pretty cool event. I would want to see something similar like this make its way out of Japan but because the way this is kind of set up where you have to buy a ticket at these sponsor locations I don't know how this can make sense in other places outside of Japan it would kind of make sense in New York you know, Niantic already does this thing with Sprint so at Sprint or you know Starbucks locations you could buy a ticket that would kind of make sense in Europe I don't know what places would they kind of have to set this up at what I would hope in the future maybe is that they would allow you to buy a ticket of sorts something like this online and then enter that QR code or whatever the ticket information inside of your game so you can unlock it so you can just play the game regular and have an increased unknown spawn or something like that. Some people might consider this pay to win. Let me know how you think about it in the comment section below. Now, I'm just going to throw this in because, again, Niantic has officially confirmed this already. I covered this about like two days ago about the Articuno day on Sunday. It's going to be happening in the same time as Pokemon Go Community Day. Players will be able to receive five raid passes from gyms as well to participate in raid battles alongside Articuno, which is pretty cool because Articuno is going to have a chance to be shiny. In addition to this, if you are in Europe from today right now, actually, I'm going to show you footage of me adding Corsola to my Pokedex because Corsola and Rosalina will have a higher spawn rates in Europe as in a Apology for the Safari Zone event having issues on Sunday. Now, again, I didn't go out to the Safari Zone event, but I was able to catch me a Corsola and add it to my.
my Pokedex. So thank you, Niantic, for spreading the love throughout all of Europe because I know a lot of people did travel that specific day to go out to the Safari Zone event and kind of had a bum day because they couldn't log on until the nighttime. And then when they did log on, it, the game was stuttering. You couldn't use, what was it, incense and stuff like that. So it, was, it had a lot of issues. So I do see this apology as being something that they needed to do. A lot of people were complaining that this apology wasn't worldwide. And I was just like, well, this was a Safari Zone event in Europe. So it made sense for them to put this apology reward out for players in Europe. I don't think a lot of players flew out to Europe and then left that same day. I think if you went out to Europe for this Pokemon Safari Zone event, you, you're still out here. So I don't think nobody jumped in and just left that same day. And day two, I was hearing that it was fine anyway. So nonetheless, let me know what you think in the comment section below about Horsla and oh, as well as Rosalina still being available in the game with an increased spawns in Europe. Now, it wouldn't be a Pokemon news show if I didn't include any Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee news now, would it? Now, if you live in the UK, Nintendo has officially announced a pre-order bonus. So anyone that pre-orders Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee in various stores will be able to get a keychain of Pikachu or Eevee, depending on the version you get. Now, this is for either just the regular game or the special edition with the Pokeball Plus packaging together. And my God, if this is how the box looks for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. It looks so beautiful and clean. I just want it now. Oh my God. Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be getting this, if you live in the UK, if you're going to be getting yourself a keychain. Now, just to end off today's news, I wanted a, it's something I've been reading over the past couple of days. I've been wanting it, trying to wait for a slow day so we can just talk about it because it's not really news because it's not something that's going to be coming to the Pokemon games for a long time. And yes, it's from Niantic, so it's coming to Pokemon Go. And it's not going to be coming to Pokemon Go for a long time. It's, it's basically a blog post from Niantic. It's a peek inside the Niantic real world platform. And basically what they're doing is just developing technology for the AR tracking. So you can be able to track stuff. They have a nice gift that kind of makes sense and shows exactly what they're talking about and what it means. Basically, with your phone, you'll be able to track what things are in the environment. It will be able to read tables and chairs, TVs, and be able to, you know, place items on tables, or in this case, place a Pikachu in a chair and have the shadow of the Pikachu be reflected perfectly. And I think that's pretty cool. I can't, again, we're a long way from this being actually a thing in our phones, but to see them that they're working on this is pretty cool and I can't wait. They even dropped a little feature, I would say a teaser trailer of what's to come of Pikachu and Eevee basically running around a crowd of people and interacting perfectly. What I it looks like that's the case. I don't I, not to say I gotta see it to believe it because it does look beautiful and it does look cool. It kind of looks scripted. I, I'm sorry I had to be the one to say that, but it kind of looks scripted. Let me know what you think about this. I'm gonna have the link to this video in the description so you guys can check it out. But I, I think this is a hundred percent scripted. <laughs> nice try, nice, but uh it does look cool. I can totally see Pokemon Go going in a way of this. I think the AR plus photo pictures are bad idea. I think too many times of uh, a Pokemon Go trainers just basically losing Pokemon that way, as well as it not being super fun, if that makes any sense. You see grass, you tap the grass and Pokemon jumps out. It's just like, uh, really, really? I think this is a more natural and a cool way to kind of have something in AR world with Pokemon interacting with the real world. I think this is something that the initial Pokemon Go trailer kind of promised. And I think that's where they're getting to. This is something, this is their probably end goal for Pokemon Go. And I do think we're still a long ways out. 
Now that's going to do it for today's Pokemon News Daily. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on everything we went through today. If it's about Zeraora and how Zeraora is now available to use in the free battle spot because codes were given out during the movie screening event. So let me know your thoughts on potentially bumping into a Zeraora in the free battle spot. Also, let me know your thoughts on this Pokemon Go Japanese event that's going to be happening. Do you want to see them potentially bring this event style out of Japan. It kind of feels pay to win to me, but let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Also, let me know what you think about Battle Season 11 coming to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and Pokemon Sun and Moon. I think it's pretty cool that they're allowing mythical Pokemon to be used. It's not the first time, but I think it's pretty cool that we are going to be seeing battles with Zygarde, Necrozma, and potentially Thera Aura and Marshadow. I think it's pretty cool. I can't wait to see what people cook up and let me know if you're going to be watching the Pokemon North American World Championship this weekend. I know I'm going to be checking it out from time to time so let me know to cover it here on the channel but let me know what you're going to be if you're interested in it in the comment section below. Like always guys I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube and yes I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one so if you enjoy please hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.